Hello, everyone, and welcome to Improvade's Life Saving Technologies 2021 International Conference. I'm Shanna Fold. Improvade is a platform for creating long lasting connections, enabling change makers in technology and decision makers in government to make progress through innovation. Improvade is all about finding solutions and sparking collaborations that improve the quality of life for people all around the world. Rhythm Life Sciences is a technology company that is set to address needs in resuscitative medicine. The need for a company making resuscitation an at-home need has been magnified by the events of the pandemic over the last year and a half. Dr. Jonathan Rosenblum, CEO of Rhythm Life Sciences, has more than 20 years of experience in the medical device world and is a trained foot and ankle surgeon. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Shana. I love that you brought things with you. Thank you. I figured it was worth getting us to show it. We love it. Jonathan, how did uh, Rhythm Life Sciences come to be? So about, we're less than two years old. About two years ago, a neighbor of mine who was taking a EMT course to honor the memory of a friend um, came to me with an idea of making a smaller portable defibrillator when mm. during their CPR course they couldn't find the hidden defibrillator in the building. Um, the idea was to make one as small as possible, as light as possible, as economically available as possible, and as easy as possible. Makes a lot of sense. How does the company seek to address the needs of the community? So we've been working with large organizations. In Israel, we work with uh, Hatzalah. In the U.S., we're working a little bit with the American Red Cross, and we're a member of the American Heart Association's Center for Health Technology and Innovation. The idea is to try and get a defibrillator into every home. The American Heart Association set that as a goal 20 years ago, um, and they found three impediments to it. One was size. People were ashamed to keep something out in their houses because mm. it implied weakness or sickness. The next was cost. And then the third was a fear factor. So when we developed our defibrillator, and this is it, you see it fits in the palm of my hand. Um, when we developed this, we addressed all three of those. It's small enough to go into a kitchen drawer so nobody needs to see it. We're keeping the cost low at about a half to two thirds of the next cheapest or next least expensive model on the market. And as far as fear factor, we've developed a number of innovative things. This pairs with a cell phone so that instead of needing the first thing you're supposed to do when you see an emergency is to call 911. Instead, as soon as you open this, it would trigger your cell phone to call whatever emergency services it is. It would send them your GPS signal where you are and begin to actually transmit the EKG signal so that EMTs coming to the front would be able to get it much quicker. Unbelievable. That is uh, multi-steps involved. How is the technology differentiating itself from competitors? Well, the first and, and one of the most important from a consumer point of view is cost. We've, we've developed it to make sure that it was cost effective so that anybody who wants one or needs one could have one. The second is size and ease of use, like I mentioned. The idea, again, is to remove the fear factor. We want the elderly who are not necessarily technologically involved mm -hmm. to be able to use it, open it, and right away they're able to use it. Beautiful. What ties does the company have to Israel? So, like I said, we do a lot of work with Hatzalah here in Jerusalem. Um, the founders are both here. The idea started here and the initial steps were taken here. We're working with, on an engineering front with some members from Unit 8200. Um, they've been very good to us. Um, the development of our second device, the Rescuer, which completes the basic life support package, was also developed here, or the idea was developed here. Um, what this does is, in addition to defibrillation, which resets the electrical charge of the heart, when you need to do compressions in CPR, many people don't know what they're doing, and the American Heart Association has started recommending for those people to do hands-only CPR, which means no more breathing or mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, but even just doing compressions needs to be in exact location. So we have a picture right on it for here. The the compression rate is very important as well. If you do it too fast, not enough blood will be circulated with each pump. And if you do it too slow, there's no real effect to it. So this has a metronome built into it, both audibly, audibly and video. You can see and hear it. 
and it also forces you to have your hand in the proper position, which will further encourage you to have better compressions. Excellent. Thank you for this device and for explaining it to us. Mr. Dr. Rosenblum, thank you.